welcome back. So in the third of this week's video is looking at some common applications of the R skills you've been learning over the last couple of months. We're going to be looking at how to explore parameter space. So this is something that you might find really useful for your own research where you maybe you have a model and you want to understand how the model behaves at different extremes with different inputs. It also might be useful for some of the work you're doing in your group projects. So let's get started. Exploring parameter space. So the cross family of functions from the per package is going to be really useful for doing this. So we'll need to load in that per library into our workspace at the start of your session. And to start with, what we're going to do is create a list of the parameters that we want to explore. Lists are really nice because they can create these asymm asymmetric collections of variables. So in this case, we're going to create a distance variable that is a sequence of numbers from 1 through 5 incremented by 1, so just five values in that sequence. And the second variable in our list is going to be a time variable that is a sequence from 10 to 1,000 incremented by 5. And then we're going to take the cross underscore df function to create a data frame of all the possible combinations of distance and time that are in our variable list. If we then take our variable list, pass it as the argument to our cross underscore df function, that's going to create a data frame with two columns, one that's distance, one that's time, but with a value with a row for each combination of distance and time that was in our list. So you can see that we had a list with just a few variables in, just a few rows, but now that's created this symmetric table with 995 rows. The next thing we want to do is create a function to run our analysis with. So we're going to use the tidyr package here a little bit. And first of all, we can create a function called speed underscore f. This is a really simple function. All it does is calculate the speed based on distance and time. So we have a function. And then we have two arguments that go into our function, one called distance, one called time. And then inside the body of our function, all we're going to do is multiply distance by time to calculate speed. Now we can use the cross underscore df function and the map to function to run our function on every combination of the distance and time variables. So we're going to create an output data frame. We're going to use the cross function to create our nice data frame based on our input lists. We can then use the mutate function. This is going to create a new variable called speed. Map2 is going to take one argument as distance, our second argument as time, and apply that speed function to every row of the data frame. And then we're just going to use the unnest function to take the list output of Map2 and create a column called speed. So if we look at our output now, we can see we have a data frame got three columns, one called distance, one called time, and one called speed. Let's go through and do that in our R workspace now. So let's start off by loading in that per library. And then let's create our list of variables. And once I run that code, you can see we have an object called var underscore list appears in our environment, and it's telling me it's a list with two variables in there. If I click on that, it opens up. You can see we're dealing with lists now, not data frames. So it all looks a little bit more complicated down here than it would do if it was a data frame. But we can see we have a object called list in here. It's of type double. And it has these five values in it. And similarly for time, it has 199 values in, starting at 10 and incrementing up. Now let's apply our cross underscore df function to that list. 
and you can see that we're going to create a table, one column called distance, one column called time with all the combinations of distance and time in those two vectors. Next, let's include our tidy R package and create our function that calculates speed. So again, it's going to be a function called speed, two arguments, distance, time, and then just multiply distance by time together to get our speed. See that appears over here on the right in your environment. Now, let's load in the code to calculate speed. Again, we're going to create an object called df. We're going to apply the cross df function to our list of variables. This time, we're going to pipe in a mutate and calculate speed for every combination of distance and time in our list using our speed underscore f function. We're going to unnest that, and that's going to leave us with a nice data frame, 995 observations of our three variables, every combination of distance and time used to calculate the speed. You might want to pause the video now and just try running that code in your own R session. Finally, what you want might want to often do when you're exploring parameter spaces to create a plot that explores, explores that parameter space. In this case, we've got these three dimensions. We've got speed, distance, and time. Um, so a kind of tile type plot is a nice way to do that. So in this case, we're going to create a plot object using ggplot. Our input's going to be our data frame. On the x-axis, we'll have distance. Y, we're going to have time. And we're going to have speed as the fill. We're then going to use geom tile put a nice simple theme on there, a continuous color scale, and just move the ledger into the top to tidy things up. So let's have a look at that in our R session. We're just going to load in the ggplot package first. Let's just build this up one step at a time. Start off with our ggplot call our data frame in there, x and y axis and fill specified. We run that. Look up in the right here, we now have an object called p. Just return that. We'll see that creates a plot. There we go. Doesn't look the nicest right now, so we'll just tidy that up a little bit by adding on our theme, changing it to a nicer color scale, and moving that legend up to the top. A lot of values in this plot, so it might just take a little while to pop up. There we go. And open that up. Wait for it to rescale. Now we can see it has all the combinations of time and distance used to calculate the speed.